Hello, hello, and welcome to Hypothyroid Chef. I'm Jenny Mahar, your thyroid health and cooking coach. And today we're gonna to be making my green and orange powerhouse breakfast hash with homemade breakfast sausage. This recipe is quick and easy. It makes a really big batch so that you have heat and eat breakfast all week long. And it's absolutely packed with energizing foods like sweet potatoes, leafy greens, and plenty of protein from the sausage. Eating a savory, protein-rich breakfast like this one with lots of colorful plant foods is one of the best and easiest things that we can do to support our energy, help us build and maintain our lean muscle mass, and also support our goals around maintaining a healthy weight. If you'd like to learn more about how to make your own breakfast sausage, you can watch my video on how to make homemade breakfast sausage. This is a staple on my thyroid-friendly menu because there's so many things you can do with it. It's also really easy to make in big batches so that you can keep some on hand, you can have it in the freezer and just be able to whip up really quick, savory, protein-rich breakfasts like this one with minimal time and effort. This recipe demo is an exclusive sneak peek into one of my Thrivers Club membership workshops. So the Thrivers Club is my private group health coaching community for thyroid patients where you can not only learn about thyroid friendly food and lifestyle, but implement it in real life to get your health and energy back. And I've currently got over 15 members only workshops and growing available in the Thrivers Club on thyroid friendly cooking, health and lifestyle topics. And one of the many cooking school workshops in there is our Heavenly Hash workshop. So without further ado, I'm thrilled to share this exclusive clip from my Thrivers Club workshop on Heavenly Hashes where I'll be making this green and orange powerhouse hash. Enjoy. This green and orange powerhouse hash is filled with energy boosting nutrients like a high protein homemade breakfast sausage that's gonna knock your socks off. Caramelized onion, crispy sweet potato, and wilted greens. Hash is an excellent way to use up and eat more of those energy boosting greens. And since they're cooked, any goitrogenic or thyroid inhibiting properties in these foods is essentially mixed. With any of these hashes, keep in mind that if you need to make ingredient substitutions for any reason, you can. Thyroid healthy eating is personalized. So you're always welcome and encouraged to customize these ingredients for your needs. This simple recipe happens to be gluten-free, dairy-free, nightshade-free, paleo, and AIP friendly. Now this formula is most similar to what I usually throw together at home, and it starts with a simple homemade breakfast sausage. This particular sausage recipe is my new favorite, so let's start by making that. Okay, so we'll start with about a pound of pastured ground pork in a medium mixing bowl. Then we'll chop up a couple cloves of garlic, toss those in, along with a teaspoon of onion powder, about a tablespoon of pure maple syrup, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is the secret ingredient that gives it its zest and zip and brings all those flavors together. And then one of my absolute favorite things to cook with is fresh herbs. So this sausage is gonna use about a tablespoon of fresh chopped sage and two teaspoons of freshly chopped thyme. The flavors in this sausage would also do well, I think, with poultry, so you could substitute ground turkey or ground chicken for the pork. We'll add a teaspoon of fine sea salt and some freshly cracked pepper to taste. And then with your clean hands, just mix that all up until everything is well combined. And we can set that aside. A good skillet is an essential piece of equipment for hash making. You can use something like this non-toxic ceramic non-stick skillet, a heavy bottom cast iron skillet, or something like this enameled cast iron skillet. Each of them has their pros and cons. For this particular hash today, I'm going to be using this ceramic non-stick skillet. The other thing we need for hash making is some kind of healthy fat to cook with. So we'll start with a little bit of this high heat friendly avocado oil to brown our sausage. When we're making hash, we are using high heat. So we wanna make sure that we have high heat friendly cooking fats. And I'll show you a couple different options in the other recipes that we'll make today. 
So we'll add just a little bit of that avocado oil to our skillet and get it nice and hot so we can really brown that homemade breakfast sausage. So we'll go ahead and get that going, chop that up. And while we're doing that, we'll par cook our sweet potatoes. Now this is a really helpful hack for hash making. Par cooking means to partially cook. So by partially cooking our starchy veggies that would typically take quite a while to cook in the skillet, what we do is we not only shorten the cooking time, but we enable ourselves to kind of focus a little bit more on just putting some nice crust and caramelization on those starchy veggies like your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, beets, celery root, and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we'll toss our sweet potatoes with a little bit of oil, we'll season with salt and pepper, and then we'll just pop it in the microwave for a few minutes while we continue to cook our breakfast sausage. Now this looks like it's getting nice and brown. That's what we want. You do really wanna use pretty high heat here because we wanna get that texture and that color. That's key to making really outstanding hash. And if we look closely at this homemade breakfast sausage, you can see that it's got some really nice, not just color, but nice little bits of crust and caramelization on it. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and remove the sausage from the skillet and set it aside. Now the ground pork that I've used here has rendered quite a bit of fat, as you can see. So I'm gonna use a slotted spoon to lift that from the pan, let some of the fat drain off and set the sausage aside. And then we'll reserve about two tablespoons of that rendered fat in the skillet. Depending on the protein you use, you may or may not have a lot of rendered fat. But here we're going to take advantage of all the delicious flavor that this rendered pork fat is going to add to our hash to help brown and crisp our veggies. Let's go ahead and get started on our veggies. Now pay attention to the steps that we're gonna use here because these are the same steps that we'll use for pretty much every single hash that we'll make today and every single one of my hash recipes. So we always start with our onion. We're gonna add our diced onion to a very hot skillet with a bit of that rendered pork fat. The skillet should be hot enough that the onion really sizzles when you add it. With hash, it's helpful to season as you go, so pretty much at every stage, I am just lightly seasoning. We'll give that a stir, and then, this is important here, we wanna walk away and just let things caramelize and get brown. Now this is a skill that you sorta of have to develop and you have to learn to trust your instincts. One of the keys here is to use your senses. So you're not just looking at the pan, you're also smelling the aromas coming from the pan, and you're listening. One chef trick that I've learned with browning things is that when you notice the pan sizzle suddenly a little bit quieter, it means a lot of that moisture has cooked off and that's a good time to give it a stir. So you can kind of experiment with that yourself when you're making your own hashes. So we'll go ahead and give that a toss or a stir. And that's really the trick here is just getting some color and caramelization on your hash, but not too much. These onions are looking plenty brown, and this is a good time to add our par-cooked sweet potatoes. Once again, you can hear that sizzle. This is a nice hot pan. Another thing I like about cooking in this ceramic nonstick skillet is that you're not getting a lot of stuff sticking to the bottom, which is kind of nice. It enables me to toss it more easily, to stir more easily, and I'm not having to deglaze the pan to lift any brown crust off the bottom of the skillet. Now, that can be a wonderful flavor technique that we'll learn in the next hash recipe that we make. But I just wanted to point that out about one of the pros of cooking your hash in a nonstick skillet like this one. Now let's add our spices. We're gonna add about a quarter teaspoon each of cinnamon, ginger, and turmeric. You won't believe how delicious this combination is. And all three of these spices happen to be anti-inflammatory and AIP friendly. Just like with our onions, we wanna let this brown. So the trick is just to cook stirring only occasionally to allow that browning to happen. And this will take about seven to 10 minutes to get everything where we want it to be. And this is looking really good. The thing about caramelization is it can seem like it's taking forever. But once that process of caramelization starts, it tends to pick up speed. So as things start to become brown, do pay closer attention. You may need to stir a little bit more frequently as things start to take on that color and crispness. 
Once the veggies are all nicely browned and tender, you can lower the heat to medium and we'll go ahead and stir in about five ounces of roughly chopped baby greens. You can use baby spinach, super greens, protein greens, any kind of hearty baby green that's good for wilting will do here. So go ahead and use what you have on hand. Greens wilt down substantially, so if your skillet's too crowded, it's totally okay to add them in batches if needed. Once those are wilted down, return the sausage to the skillet and cook everything until it's heated through. And then we'll garnish this hash with some sliced green onion. And there you have it, green and orange powerhouse hash seasoned with anti-inflammatory spices, bursting with nutrients and flavor, and absolutely delicious. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button for more thyroid friendly recipes and lifestyle inspiration. You can find the link to the printable recipe for this green and orange powerhouse hash in the video description, along with some of the thyroid healthy highlights of the ingredients in the recipe. I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into one of my many members only cooking workshops. If you would like unlimited access to the complete workshop on heavenly hashes, along with 15 other workshops on thyroid friendly food, health and lifestyle topics, join us in the Thrivers Club. You can do so at hypothyroidchef.com slash membership. Also, if you're in need of more thyroid friendly breakfast ideas, good news, you can download my free thyroid friendly breakfast guide that features my top five breakfast ideas, recipes, and tips. And you can grab that free download at hypothyroidchef.com slash breakfast. And I'll also put the link in the description for that as well. All right, I'm Ginny Mahar, the Hypothyroid Chef, wishing you happy cooking, happy thriving, and the best of health. See you next time.